Hello everyone, Vicentio from HTTV Test here. I need your feedback about what we should do about the 2020 TV shootout. So I'm going to be really upfront and frank about the whole shootout planning process and what we should do for this year because of what is happening around the world. So normally, every year after CES at the beginning of the year, we start planning for the shootout by shortlisting the TVs. But obviously this year, our plans have been thrown into disarray because of COVID-19. And here's the thing, right? We normally would book a venue to put all these TVs and then invite people to come around and have a look at these TVs and then vote on these TVs. But I don't think that's going to be able to be carried out in a normal fashion this year. Because first of all, if we started booking a venue and place a deposit, then what if the UK government suddenly on the day before the shootout said that all venues have to be closed, all congregation, more than say six people, have to be shut down, and we will lose the deposit and the shootout can't happen. So booking a venue is out of the question. If we can't book a venue, then the only logical place to hold the shootout would be in the shop floor, you know, there's an upstairs area in Crampton Mall Leeds where it is quite dark, it is a bit cramped, you know, just the way I like it. But yes, it is a confined space and I don't think that people or attendees for our normal shootout will be able to squeeze into that space. I mean, the virus thrives in confined space without ventilation and that is certainly not how I would like the shootout to be remembered as as a place where you know COVID-19 spread. So I think inviting the public is definitely out of the question. So I think the only way the TV shootout will happen this year is if only me, myself, and maybe one other calibrator come along and then we have a look at all the TVs together with the mastering monitor. Now again, Trying to get a mastering monitor in the pandemic is probably not going to be the easiest, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, renting, in terms of transporting and things like that. So that is another big question. But I'm just putting it out to you. Will you trust our judgment, let's say myself, even if it is only myself? Will you trust my judgment if I'm the only person to have calibrated those TVs, to have put content on these TVs, comparing it to the mastering monitor, and then giving you a verdict as to the best TV for various different categories that we are normally judging for in a shootout? Will the shootout have any credibility? Will you find it useful if I proceed with a shootout in this fashion? Basically, we line up the TVs in the room upstairs at Compton Mall Leeds, and then we calibrate it, compare it against the mastering monitor in the various picture area performance that we normally cover anyway. So ranging from contrast performance, color accuracy, video processing, screen uniformity, motion handling, bright room performance, gaming, and then also HDR. So all these areas, you know, and we will Basically, I say we, but basically I will break down the scores. And I think some of you have been requesting for live streaming for the past few years, but I think it is going to be extremely difficult to live stream this and convey the appropriate information across the internet and also YouTube's compression or whatever streaming platform that we decide to use and also the screen on which you are going to be watching the live stream. So I really don't want people to start thinking that this TV is red tinted when in real life it is not red tinted at all. The thing is that these different TVs, well, I say different, you know, they are at least two different technologies. With the QLEDs, they are using quantum dot color spectrum. And with the OLEDs, they are using WRGB OLEDs. And when you calibrate them, even though they look identical by eye, they will look different on camera because of how the camera sensor responds to this different light output from this different spectral power distribution. So I don't think a live stream will be able to 100% reproduce or accurately capture what is actually happening within the shootout, which is why I'm loath to actually 
do a live stream. But you know, if there is enough demand, if you think that you can see past all this, that it won't be representative anyway, you just want to see us mess about and judge these TVs, then maybe we can consider it. So I think the first question is, should I proceed with a shootout in this manner? Will you find it valuable? Will the awards that I'll be handing out have any credibility if it is only down to myself? Obviously, I will be as fair and objective as possible, but I know some of you think that, you know, I'm pro certain TV brands, I'm pro this brand, I'm anti this brand, but hopefully throughout my TV reviews, you would have noticed that I always criticize every single TV that I review. There's no one TV that I, you know, universally praise without actually pointing out the flaws at all. So I think from that point of view, I would like to think that I am quite level-headed and objective and biased, and I'm putting out all these measurements and this objective data for you to judge. But at the end of the day, some of you will still think that I'm biased for certain manufacturers or against certain manufacturers. So that is something that I have to take into account as well. Whether if I actually proceed with a shootout in this fashion, judging all these TVs that I've calibrated myself against the mastering monitor, and I decide on, say, winners for a certain category and an overall winner, will that have any credibility with you guys? Will the award be of any use to you guys? So from that point of view, the first question I would like some feedback on is whether we should proceed with a shootout in this fashion. And secondly, we come to what TVs we should include in the shootout. So off the top of my head, from CES, I think you know we already know that we wanted the LG C10 in there. We wanted the Sony A8 or A8H in the USA in there. We wanted the top-end Panasonic HZ2000 in there because that is their top panel with superior picture quality due to the custom professional panel. Whereas, let's say with the LG C10 or CX, there is no difference in picture quality between the CX and also the GX. And the A8 from Sony, it is the only OLED that they do this year. Obviously, they have an A9G from 2019 that is actually carried over for 2020. But for all intents and purposes, I think the A8 will have slightly better picture quality because of improved near black handling and also using 2020 panels and also using the 120Hz black frame insertion or BFI. And then Last but not least, we'll probably include a Samsung TV as well. And this is the second question that I want to actually ask you. Should we include the Samsung Q950TS, which is 8K, which is their top tier flagship TV? Or should we include the Samsung Q95T, which is their 4K QLED? Now I've reviewed both TVs and in all honesty, I think the Q95T actually produces better picture quality than the 8K QLED. Because with 8K QLED, the increased pixel density actually reduces light transmittance drastically, so much so that it is actually not as bright full screen as the Q95T and the local living algorithm and game mode as well. is actually better on the Q95T, which is 4K. So from that point of view, I wanted to ask you whether it is sensible to include the Q95T because, you know, in my opinion, it delivers a better picture quality than the Samsung Q950TS 8K QLED. Or should I include the Samsung Q950TS because it is their flagship top tier TV from this South Korean brand? And the other thing that plays on my mind is that, let's say if we go with the Q95T, we can actually start using 55-inch screens from each manufacturer. So let's say the LG C10 or CX, it comes in 55 inches. The Sony A8 or A8H, it comes in 55 inches. The Panasonic AZ2000, it comes in 55 inches. And if we decide to use the Samsung Q95T, we can go with 55 inches as well. So there will be more room you know for us to breathe you know for us to walk around and also we may potentially be able to squeeze another 55 inch tv in the comparison lineup not forgetting the mastering monitor as well if we manage to get our hands on one but if we decide to go with the 8k qled 
the Samsung Q950TS, then it only comes in 65 inches. So we have to go with 65 inch screens for all these TVs and that will limit our choice and limit our movement, limit the room we have to operate. So that is another thing on my mind as well. And the last question I really want to ask is, I think over the last few years, a few of you have posed the question to me, why haven't I actually included Philips TVs inside our normal shootout? Now, the honest answer is that normally when we conduct a shootout near June, July, August, usually the flagship Philips OLED hasn't actually been released onto the market, so we couldn't get them in time. But this year, I think their flagship is the 935, and that hasn't been released yet. And the step down 805, we can include it potentially, but in my mind, we need to put the Philips 935 because that has the fourth generation P5 processor with an additional daughter chip, especially for AI implementation. So that will have slightly better picture quality than the 805. So I think, you know, if we wanted to put a Philips OLED in there, it is only logical that we put the Philips 935 in there, but will it come out in time for the shootout? And do we have the funds and budget to actually buy the TV ourselves? And we only want to use retail stock. So that is another thing that is integral to the integrity of our shootout. We only use retail stock to make sure that, you know, there are no golden samples. There are no specially tuned sets, you know, from any manufacturers. So, in a nutshell, I need your feedback for these three questions. One, in fact, I think there are four questions. One, should we go ahead with the shootout in this format? Basically, I will calibrate these TVs and I will judge the TVs, score the TVs, you know, and it's all down to me, if you trust me enough. Two, should we use the Samsung Q95T, which is 4K, or the Q950TS, which is 8K. 3. Should we use 55-inch screens or 65-inch screens? And part of this will probably depend on the second question, whether we want to go with the 8K QLED or the 4K QLED. And then 4. Should we try and include a Philips OLED in the shootout lineup at all? Let me know your feedback in the YouTube comment section below. And depending on the feedback, we may proceed with the shootout or not. And I thank you for your time for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Just